Welcome to this edition of the eClinical Works podcast. I'm Adam Salati, and today's episode will focus on physician burnout. Physician burnout is a major issue in the healthcare industry today, and a recent study by Stanford Medicine highlighted several opinions from providers that were interviewed on ways that EHRs could improve and help reduce the burden of physician burnout. Uh, in that study, 67% of respondents said interoperability was one area of deficiency and a place where they would like to see major improvements in the next few years. eClinical Works, of course, continues to innovate and advance the ability of interoperability every single day. And here to speak with me about that is Farah Saeed, uh, who is a specialist here in the interoperability space at eClinical Works. Farah, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Adam. Farah, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges when it comes to interoperability? When people talk about deficiencies in interoperability, what are they talking about? Yeah, so one of the biggest problems in the industry today is really getting all the information that you need to treat your patients in one place and making that access to the information as easy as possible. Um, so, you know, as, as most providers know, of course, you can't function in the bubble that is just your office. There, your patients travel, they go to other locations, they see other physicians other support services, um, and really getting all that information in one place um, is the goal that interoperability is trying to solve. And then to improve interoperability is just to make it as seamless and as easy as possible. So if we were to break that down, it sounds like you're talking about accessing the right information. It sounds like we're talking about organizing information, uh, incorporating that information into the point of care, you know, into the workflow, into the patient's record in an easy way, um, and also being able to find the right information. I mean, these are all things that people struggle with. Now, uh, what are some solutions out there that are being proposed? I mean, I know that uh, a lot of times these providers are hearing that, hey, if you want this information, you know, a big source of this is the hospital. Um, that's, a, that's a place where they've been trying to get that information that traditionally has been difficult. And I think a lot of these providers are hearing that in order to get that information, you have to join some sort of a hospital network. Is that the case or are there other ways to, to access this kind of information? Yeah, um, and, and that's absolutely true, Adam. A lot of our providers do come to us and say, you know, we've been told we need to switch EMR systems, we need to go onto the same system as the hospital. And that's definitely not the case anymore um, in this day and age of interoperability. So as eClinical Works, we have a number of solutions to help providers communicate more easily um, with these external systems, whether they're hospitals or other providers out there. Um, some of the more common ones that I think our providers most probably know about um, P2P, of course, which is our provider to provider network. Uh, that's what's going to help providers out there exchange referrals more easily. Um, and of course, layered on top of our P2P network is direct messaging. Um, and that's basically what opens up the network to everybody nationwide who might have a direct address. Uh, direct addresses, of course, being essentially the, the EMR to EMR email address, how providers can speak to each other. Um, so P2P and direct exists out there today. Day. Um, also, we have EHX. Uh, EHX is eClinical Works' health information exchange solution. So we have a number of communities um, that set up these kind of mini servers to sit between their network of practices that are all affiliated with each other uh, to help them share data and communicate more effectively. Um, now, we've had these solutions as well as a number of other interfaces, lab interfaces, um, you know, practice management interfaces that exist for other systems out there. Um, so these all have been around for some time, uh, but the problem, I guess, for a lot of practices are ones who aren't part of an affiliated community who are saying, okay, I, I might not necessarily need to join just this network. I'm an independent physician. I speak to a number of hospitals out there. Um, so to kind of solve this specific problem, they are to, there are two leading nationwide initiatives that have come up, um, and they are Commonwealth and Care Equality. Uh, so these are third-party groups that have come together. They're formed of a number of vendor systems. Each of them have their own group of vendors. eClinical Works is participating in both. Um, and their purpose is to promote easier interoperability between all these different systems if you're not necessarily belonging to one specific hospital network or community network. Okay, so Commonwealth and Care Equality, uh, information networks that help to share 
you know, medical records, medical information back and forth between different points of care. Who are on these networks? Uh, who's using this information? Yeah. So there are a number of EMR systems out um, out there that, that are participating in both. Um, that's really going to be the primary difference between the two is which vendors are participating in each one. Um, so for care equality, the biggest inpatient systems out there are going to be Epic and NextGen. Um, and in Commonwealth, the two biggest uh, are going to be Cerner and Meditech. So those are those are really who is participating in both. Um, I can tell you on our side, we have over 2,500 practices already connected. Um, in both of these organizations, there are thousands of, of systems nationwide already connected and already sharing data. Now, I'd like to get some more info from you on, on some of the data that is flowing across those networks and, and some of the ways that that's helping to reduce physician burnout. But if a practice wanted to get involved with those networks today, uh, what would they have to do? I know that uh, uh, we are including those integrations at no extra cost as part of the ECW system. So how would somebody get onto the Commonwealth or Care Equality Network today? As you said, it is free of cost. And for most of our practices, it's available for on-demand activation from within their EMR. So everybody on version 11 and clients who are on our later versions of version 10, um, all you have to do is go into your admin band, go down to product activation, and there's a section called the Interoperability Hub. And that's where you will find both Commonwealth and Care Equality options and you can just run it on your own. There's no project, there's no timeline associated with it. It goes through right from there. Um, we do belong to both networks, so as a practice, you can definitely uh, participate with both networks as well. So in the on-demand process, it will ask you to only check one, uh, so you just have to do it one at a time. You can go through, activate the first one, and then go through and do it again for the second. Okay, and there's definitely no reason not to join both networks uh, since we're including it at no additional cost. Now, Far, I know these are national networks. I know practices that are, are integrated with these networks are getting information sometimes from all over the country, you know, if their patients are on vacation or if sometimes they spend part of the year in another location. But let's start to talk about some of the information that goes back and forth on these networks. How is ECW's integration with Commonwealth and Care Equality helping to reduce physician burnout? So, you know, Adam, as we mentioned at the beginning, one of the biggest problems um, within the interoperability sphere um, is getting all the data that you need easily. So today, the way that works is providers are seeing a patient, patients come in, they say, oh, yeah, last week I was at some hospital. Which hospital were you at? Oh, I don't know. It was the one up the street. You know, they don't always remember all of the information. They don't necessarily have the exact date and time. Doctor is going to go up to their front desk, say, hey, you know, we need this patient's information. Can you call all the hospitals that are in with, you know, maybe down the street from us or all the hospitals in the county, you know, because they don't remember which one they went to. So it's, it's, a, it's a big process and it can take time and it takes a lot of effort to get all of that data uh, in one place sent over to your practice so the doctors can review it. So the, with Care Quality and Commonwealth, as long as all the other organizations are participating, which is what our goal is here. All that needs to be done is as long as the patient has chosen to participate, has given their consent to participate, when you mark your patient as arrived, a query is going to go out into the network. It's going to gather that data and deliver it straight into the EMR. So the first thing we're doing is we're taking away that calling, that checking, you know, that whole process. Everything is triggered on arrival. There are no additional clicks required for this. So as we know, clicks are a big part um, of the EMR workflow. So that's the first thing we did is to eliminate that. Um, it's all fully triggered on the patient arrival. Um, then to make the data easier to view when it comes into your system, we deliver it to the right chart panel. So providers don't need to go looking for it. They don't need to open any additional sections or windows or, you know, go away from the note. Uh, the data is going to be right there on the progress note on the right chart panel um, on a new tab titled EHX. Now, Farah, is this going to make stuff like following up with tests and referrals easier as well, or are we just talking about hospital information? It's definitely going to make um, following up on information like tests easier. Referrals, we're still going to keep in that direct workflow. Um, just because the way the data is queried, 
you can certainly use this for that as well, but it's just not as timely as you might get with, with referrals. Um, reason for that being is data is queried when patients arrive. So it's all, it's all for the purposes of treatment. When the patients are presenting, that's when we pull the data and display it for you to view so it's available at that time. So far, with all of this information flowing back and forth between these settings, I mean, there's a lot of data to sift through. Uh, how is eClinical Works making it easier to find the information that's relevant for my patient today, and as opposed to stuff that may have been done a long time ago, uh, but is still in the patient's record? Yeah, so we have two ways to, to help out with that. So the first is the data that actually shows up on the right chart panel itself. So on that panel, we have the problem list, the allergies, and the medications. And all three of these sections are available for discrete import. So that, again, is going to help with your documentation for today's note. Um, patient was maybe in the hospital last week, they added a medication into their regime, it's going to show up on the right chart panel. And just like all the other tabs that you might already be familiar with on that on the panel. Uh, there's a little blue arrow and clicking on that blue arrow will let you bring it into your note without having to retype it to go into meds, search for it by name, search for the dosage. You know, you can just one click pull it over into your progress note. So again, those sections were problem list, allergies and medications. Um, in addition to that, from that right chart panel itself, you can click a tab and it will pop open a window where you can view the full CCDA document. Now, like you mentioned, there might be months and months of data that, that's located on, on this screen. Um, to help providers out, what we have is a couple filters on that screen. So they can filter by source, which is the name of the hospital, the name of the practice, you know, wherever, wherever that data might be coming from, as well as date filters. So if the, if the patient says, I was in the hospital last week, you can change those date filters to just one week ago, and it will only filter down to the data that's come in for that time range. That sounds like a big improvement because I know sometimes when we're getting all those faxes through the fax server, uh, those things are being attached to the patient. They're being named usually with the date first and things like that. So now they're all you know listed here and it can be tough to sift through those things. So it's great to hear that there uh, are some filters there. Now, another important question, of course, is what is the source for this information? You know, some of the data that we're getting from our payers, from other organizations that we're affiliated with, that can sometimes be based on claims data or it's old by the time it gets to us because there's a lot of processing involved. How quickly does this information turn around and what, in, what is the data source there that's, that's allowing for that? Yeah, uh, so the data is all going to be clinical, that all the data that's exchanged through Care Quality and Commonwealth. Um, so what basically happens is when a provider is documenting in whatever system they might have, whether it's a node or however they might refer to it, as soon as they lock that node or consider it done, um, of course we know in our system we call it locking, other hospital systems may have other terminology for it, but as soon as that node is closed out in that system, it's available for exchange on the network. So as long as the providers are locking soon after the actual visit, it could be available instantaneously. So there's no waiting, there's no waiting on processing. Um, as soon as that provider locks out that node, if a query goes out five minutes later, patients located in another office, another hospital, they'll be able to pull in that data immediately. Great, so that information will be available almost as quickly as it is, uh, is completed there. Now, eClinical Works, of course, continues to innovate in this space, and one of the things that we announced at this year's national conference was Prisma, which is the industry's first health information search engine. Uh, what is Prisma going to do to further enhance what we're able to do with interoperability today? Yeah, well, let me tell you, uh, Adam, we're really excited about Prisma as well, so hopefully that will carry over to the providers. So what Prisma is doing is, is just making it even easier to view and translate and access this information for providers. So it will be embedded within the progress note. There'll be a link to open up Prisma. And Prisma is going to gather all of this information that's coming in from Care Quality, from Commonwealth, from any other external sources that you might have interfaced into your system. And it's going to present it in a beautiful timeline view. So you'll be able to see hospital admissions, any testing that was done. And the greatest part about it is it's going to be searchable. So 
just like we mentioned before, this issue of sifting through the data. We already have filters to make that a little easier, but this is going to take this to the next level. Um, we'll be able to search for words within those notes. So you'll be able to search for x-rays specifically or certain uh, lab work specifically. Um, it's going to make searching and, and getting that data immediately um, at the tip of your fingers even easier. Excellent. Well, we're very excited to see what comes out there with Prisma, and hopefully that will be released uh, soon. Uh, thank you so much, Far, for your time here today. For the eClinical Works podcast, I'm Adam Salati, and if you'd like to see any of our other episodes, you can check them out on iTunes, YouTube, or my.eclinicalworks.com. And of course, if you'd like any more information about the things that we discussed here today, check out my.eclinicalworks.com or speak with your strategic account manager. I'm Adam Salati, and thanks for watching.